Now we're going to take a look at the query loop. The query loop is a feature that allows you to display content from your website's database based on specific parameters. This feature typically was created using PHP, but now thanks to the query loop, you can do it without code. Query loops are useful for enabling users to display posts, pages, categories, tags, and more under certain criteria. You can create lists that are automatically updated on your homepage or other pages. You'll have full control over how many items appear, their order, and how they're laid out. And then you can set parameters such as categories or tags and simply let WordPress deal with the rest of it. Let's see how we can incorporate query loops into our project. We're gonna be working on our portfolio page. Our portfolio page is going to show a collection of case studies so users can see how our company has helped other homes and businesses by adding terrariums to spice things up. Let's go ahead and work on this page. I'm gonna go into my dashboard and I'll go to my pages section. I'm going to click on my portfolio and we'll select edit. We'll quickly put together the header of this page and we'll add some text. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off the default title for this page. We are going to use one of the patterns that we had created earlier so that we can create a hero image. I'll go ahead and drop this into my page and then I can make modifications to the hero image. I'm going to update the content on the page. And of course, having my pattern available makes all of this really quick and easy. I will swap out my hero image. Then I'll add another block and I'm just gonna put this one together quickly. I'll be using a stack here and I'm going to insert a heading and some text. Now that I have this information in place, we are ready to use the query loop. So what I wanna do on this particular page is I wanna create a list of my posts that have the category of case study. I only wanna bring in the case study posts in this area. Let's return to the portfolio page. We'll go ahead and we'll create a new block and I'm going to search for something called the query loop. When you select the query loop, this will allow you to bring in different post types and control the parameters regarding what post types you'll want to display. In addition, you can also choose exactly what content you wanna show with these posts. When you click the query loop, you will have some pre-made options, but we're just gonna build ours from scratch. So I'm going to select the query loop. I will go ahead and start from blank. And you can see that you can choose to show the title and the date, the title and an excerpt, title date and excerpt, image date and title, lots of choices, and you have full control over this. I'm going to use title and excerpt to start off with, which is going to allow me to list these elements. Now, currently all of my posts are coming in. Remember, we wanna be able to control which posts are gonna show. So I'm going to go ahead and make some modifications here. Let's go to the list view so we can see how the query loop is currently set up. You can see that the query loop is using something called the post template. It's showing a title and an excerpt, and then at the bottom there is pagination, which will allow users to navigate to the different pages. Let's go ahead and modify some of these things. With the query loop block selected, I'm going to open up our settings. This is going to allow me to control how I want the query loop to display. Using the query loop, you can bring in posts or pages. We will go ahead and stick with posts. I want the order to be newest to oldest. We don't currently have any sticky posts. Sticky post is a specific post that you will identify as being sticky and regardless of the date, it will always stick to the top of the stack. I'm going to change this to exclude just in case we end up making some sticky posts, but this is an option you have. I'm also going to reduce the number of posts down to six. Then I'll open the filter options. We're gonna filter by taxonomies. 
and we want to filter by categories. So I'm going to go ahead and write case study. As you can see now, WordPress is only bringing in posts that have the case study category. Next, I'm going to click on the post template. The post template is how we can style the area that displays our posts. I will go to the style area. We'll change the background color of this area to white and everything else we're going to leave at the defaults. Inside the post template, I want to add a featured image along with these other elements. So I'm going to go back to the block editor. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the area of the website that allows me to control the different elements that you can pick up from your posts. So some of these things are already here. Inside the query loop, we are displaying our title and an excerpt. I also want to display a featured image. We've used the featured image elsewhere. Now, if we go to list view, you can see that the featured image is not in the post template. It is actually appearing underneath the post template. I will open up the post template and I'm going to drag this in between the title and the excerpt. Now you can see that all of my posts are going to show their associated featured image. This is starting to come together nicely, although I don't really like the layout. We're going to click on post template and in the area above, we are currently viewing this in list view. I'm going to switch to grid view. When you select grid view, your posts are going to show up in a grid area. You can control the way the layout displays by adjusting the number of columns. And then we can go ahead and go into the styles and control spacing and things that are going to make our grid look better. So I will leave the columns at three, but I am going to go into the styles area and we are going to add some block spacing. This is going to separate out the posts and give them a little bit more breathing room. I will set this to large. I like the spacing, but I'm not really liking how when these elements are displayed, the entire thing shows with white. I really only want the post itself to have the white background and then this light gray to display in between the elements. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our post template. We're going to remove the background color on the post template. Then what we're going to do is we're going to select the title, featured image, and excerpt, and I'm going to group these elements together. Once these items are selected, I will use the command shortcut of command or control G to group these together. Now I've placed these elements within a group. Now that they're within a group, I can come over here to settings, go to styles, set the background color to white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some padding. And to make this look a little bit cleaner, I'm going to ensure that all of my posts are the same height. You can see that some of the posts, depending on the length of the title, will be taller than other posts. To make them all have the same minimum height, I'll come to the minimum height area I'll change the value to percent, and then I'm going to plug in 100%. This is going to allow these to take up 100% of the available space. Let's go ahead and set the border to be one pixel. I'm going to set the color to be my midtone gray, and we're going to round the radius slightly so that the style of this matches other elements within our page. Since I'm only showing the excerpt of text, let's go ahead and add the read more link. Within the group, I'm going to click the plus sign. And once again, if we come down to the area that allows us to control how the post is displayed, we do have something called read more. I'm going to add this. I'll go back to list view and I'll move this into the group so that it appears underneath the excerpt. And then with read more selected, I'm going to go to the style tab and we're going to go ahead and go to typography. I'm going to open up appearance and we're going to set this link to be bold. And finally, I'm going to select within the group and we will go ahead and justify items to the left so that the read more button now shows up on the left. 
Let's go ahead and save this and preview it in the front end so we can make sure everything's looking the way we like. As you can see, my portfolio page now has this custom hero image. We have the default text and then our query loop is bringing in only the posts that have the case study category attached to them. We are displaying the title, the image, and an excerpt along with a read more button so that users can quickly go to the full article. I'm going to go back to the editor and we're gonna select the title and simply reduce the size down slightly. All I have to do is select on one of these and all of them are gonna update with those changes since the query loop will apply any edits to every single element that's being generated. Now let's come down to the pagination section and let's style this a little bit as well. So in the pagination area, we can allow the user to go to next and previous pages. Because we only have six posts that have the case study category, this is not going to display. If I go into my query loop and I change the number of posts to four and we'll click save, I'll update this on the front end. Now it's showing how this will display. I will change this back to six posts, but before I do so, I wanna make sure that I like the way this looks in case I end up adding more posts in the future. Back here, we're going to go to the previous page. We can control the background color and the size of the text. This looks okay for now. Let's click on the page numbers and let's go into styles. We'll go to typography appearance. We're going to make the numbers appear bold so they stand out a little bit more. There is one other change I want to make. I'm gonna come back to the pagination block and we can also change the way that the previous and next page display. So currently we're not using any arrow. We can choose to use an arrow, which is going to add a little icon like this, or a chevron. And with either of these options, you can choose to show or hide the text. So I kind of prefer this more simplified version where it only shows the arrows and no text. I'll go ahead and click save to accept these changes. Now I'm going to go back to query loop and we'll set the post per page back to six. It also looks like I have a paragraph down at the bottom which is unnecessary, so I'm simply going to click on the three dots and hit delete to eliminate that. I'll click save and this is what our page is going to look like. You can see how useful query loops are because you can easily create a dynamic page but still have plenty of control regarding how that page is going to look. I think you'll find query loops to be extremely useful in your design process.